What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name is Matt. Behind me, Old Blue, my trusty reliable uh, F-350 pickup truck here. Old Blue's been with me a long time and it's been a darn good truck and it's getting to the point where it's life where the body's been fixed once on it. Thanks to the copious amounts of salt that they put on the roads in Pennsylvania, the body is getting a little soft yet again. So I do like this truck. I am trying to hang on to this truck. In case you haven't seen the price of trucks lately, they are just out of sight. So I'm going to try to make this one last as long as I can. But uh, places like down here in the rocker, you can see I got some rot going on down here again. Up here it's a little worse, but I had the bottoms of the doors all fixed up a few years ago, as well as a bunch of other places on the truck. And most of it's still holding up good. The fenders are still good, uh, which is, I guess, kind of rare for these trucks in my area. But uh, that's the primary reason I have a flatbed now is because the bed was pretty much just completely rotted off of it. The cross members were all gone. The fenders were all gone. It was, it was not good. So anyways, I tried a product last year called Fluid Film. Now I am not associated with these guys in any way, shape or form, but I will say after a year of using their stuff on my beater with a heater, my $200 Jeep Cherokee, videos to that are down in the description or up in the corner or something or other. Anyways, the stuff held up really good all through last winter, and even right now, there's still a good little coating of that fluid film left underneath the vehicle. And, uh, you know, this is after splashing through water and mud holes and everything else. So it's held up really well. So I want to do it to old blue there. But uh, the problem is, you know, there could be a nice big building here or something with a lift in it, but there's not. You know, we're kind of just in the woods. As many of you know, I have plenty of equipment that I could just lift the truck up with and get underneath of it. And that's sort of what I did with the uh, the old Jeep there. But the truck is quite a bit heavier and it's not really the safest way to go about it. I did make it kind of safe doing it with the, uh, the Bobcat and the Jeep last time. But I'm looking for a better way to do it so that I don't die trying to keep my vehicles from rusting away. So just looking around here, I've kind of got some ideas and I think we're going to try something here. And if you guys know me, you know it's probably going to involve some heavy equipment. Ah!
think this is gonna work just nicely. That's a lot better, but we're still not through. Now that we're in the world of OSHA violations, let me explain to you how I justify this in my mind to say that this is safe. I think safety is all about calculated risk. I'm responsible for my safety, not you guys. So I know there's gonna be people going bananas in the comments about this, but I think that this is reasonably safe because of percentages, okay? So my crane here, now I trust the crane itself. The crane itself is sound, I've been all over it. Uh, the only thing that I'm slightly skeptical about would be that cable that's on there. I've never changed it. It does have a couple little frays in it, and it's a little rusty. I'd say I have about 80% faith that this is not going to fail. I'm 80% certain that this is going to be just fine and it's not going to break. Cables tend to only break when you're putting loads on them, uh, not just static hanging free weight on it. So it's lifted it there, it's holding it, it's, it's probably not going to go anywhere. So 80% certain that that's gonna be fine. Now, to make up for that missing 20%, we bring in the Fat Alice here. Fat Alice is an old machine with hydraulic lines that are no doubt in rough shape. I would only trust Fat Alice to hold the truck up maybe like 20%. So there we go, we got our 100%. And really, she's not doing anything. She's just there in case the 80% lets go. So if that crane lets go, the forks catch us. And I've lifted quite a bit of weight with this thing and it's been fine. So if the cable lets go, the forks got us, we're not gonna die and I'm gonna scramble out of there and we're gonna abort this mission. Now, that being said, even if we're underneath here, 
and the cable lets go and worst case Ontario the hydraulic line blows at the exact same time and the truck actually comes down well unless we're directly under the axle which I'm not going to spend any time underneath there unless we're right in that spot we're going to be okay we're going to have a goose egg on our heads no doubt it's going to suck but being that we have this three and a half four foot of space up here underneath the front of the truck we're going to be okay we're not going to get crushed we're just going to get a serious uh compressed disc or something so but yeah that's that's calculated risk in my mind now let's undercoat a truck as you guys can no doubt see my truck has seen some better days in her underside here pennsylvania life has not been great but she is still here and that's why i'm trying to protect it for as long as i can it's not really worth doing a cab swap in my opinion I'm looking to upgrade the truck here in a few years time anyway. This has already been replaced once about five, six years ago, and it's like eighth inch plate. <laughs> so I don't think that's going to rot out, but everything around it will. The engine and transmission look like they have provided their own anti-rust coating, so that's good. We don't have to worry about that. Just keep checking fluid levels. But we're going to focus on the body and underneath the flatbed here. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to tell. The lighting is getting bad for the camera. But uh, yeah, we've got some flaky rust scale and stuff on here. And that's all from garbage slinging up off the tires and getting stuck underneath the bed and just hanging out there. All right. So I kept this stuff inside overnight. And then I've been heating it up in my truck all morning here. So it's nice and pliable. Last time I had some issues, it was a little chilly uh, and it didn't like to spray too well. So I'm hoping with it being warmer, it should come out of the gun a little bit better. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's do this up. Some of you guys will remember I fixed this compressor about a year ago now. It's been a pretty good compressor for me. I did end up replacing the actual compressor part right after I made the first video, but I've put a lot of time on it since then. This is the compressor that painted the grater. Uh, yeah, it's been working out good. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the air compressor noise in advance. I know it's going to get obnoxious. All right, well, if you're thinking about using this stuff, we've come to what I think is the worst part of the job, and that's filling your containers back up. Doesn't seem like it takes too long, and you're out. I wish there was some way to put like a sprayer on the whole bucket and just go bananas with it. There we go. See, I, I should probably do this in the summertime and I wouldn't have the problems with it getting cold and not wanting to go through the funnel. I thought about trying to build a little fire and put this thing in a bucket of water and heating it up, but I'm losing daylight, I don't have that kind of time now.
were burning daylight there, so I really didn't have any time to waste. But I think I got this thing pretty well covered. Um, you can see actually like these places where it's more solid colored in. That's actually like I went kind of almost too heavy there. I don't know that you really could go too heavy. It's not really a thing. Uh, it's kind of like the bigger the gob, the better the job, as AVE would say. But uh, it's sufficiently coated before it gets to that concentration. But uh, I think we caught everything pretty good. All back in here, you know, you got mud flaps, but your tire still just pounds salt and everything into all these little nooks and crannies and dirt lays in there and it all just really rots everything out in quite a hurry. All this up underneath here. Oh yeah, looking good. It actually shows up on camera better than it does in person. I was kind of watching through the lens there for a little bit so I could see where I sprayed easier. Down underneath here, what's left of my body of the truck. Got it really good. You don't have to worry about trying to get into all those little nooks and crannies. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy. You can stick the whole gun in there at this point because it's so rotted away. Between the frame rails, we've got all this, everything that I could get to. Same thing down this side. Did my box real good there. I did inside and outside of the frame rails all the way around. So I think we got everything that we need to back here. I guess it's time to go ahead and let the truck down now that it's covered in snow. I, uh, yeah, I kind of timed this just right. They have not been any salt put on the roads yet, but I'm sure they're salting them right now. So the truck did not have any salt on it yet this year. So I'm glad we're getting this done. one place that we didn't get yet on both sides right here behind the front wheel I gotta get that section of frame up inside the fender right here in the front bumper and then we are out of here which is good because I'm cold and hungry for the tricky part, backing down off the snow covered ramps without falling off of them. about ready for her annual salt treatment. Okay, well it is the very next day now and it snowed pretty much all night. Not, we didn't get too much more. I think we only got like two inches or so, but the roads are still pretty much garbage and uh, I'm on my way up to my buddy's house right now where we're gonna go start that clearing project with the 977, so that's pretty exciting. But. I got my undercoating done just in the nick of time because this stuff right here plastered up underneath your undercarriage is what just destroys your vehicle in this climate. So I just drove probably 10 miles in all the slush and salt and crap. And uh, you can see that fluid film hasn't gone anywhere. Stuff looks great. I'm really happy with this stuff. 
I pay close attention when I'm spraying and I make sure I soak down all the nuts and bolts and stuff and all the brake fittings, all that stuff. And it really helps uh, break those things loose when you need to when the time comes. It's kind of acts like a slow working penetrating oil almost. Keeps everything lubed up. Just to be clear, I know that there's dirt on the vehicle and I'm just spraying right over it and that's probably not the ideal situation, but bottom line is it's too darn cold out here right now to be washing the vehicle. All I'm gonna do is uh, make a big popsicle on the bottom and then it definitely won't stick. Um, but two, my theory is that the dirt is clean dirt. It doesn't have salt in it or anything that's gonna erode the vehicle. So putting a ton of this stuff over top of it is going to actually saturate into the dirt and the mud and basically just make a thicker protective film. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Plus this thing was only 200 bucks and I don't care about it that much.
areas like this where you can see there's a little bit of rust coming through the paint down behind this uh, plastic here. I sprayed it last year with the fluid film and you can see this stuff right here. That's still the fluid film from last year. So I think this stuff holds up pretty good. This Jeep has been washed, believe it or not, several times. And uh, that stuff's still on there, so. Give it a nice fresh coat. I'm not really worried about what it looks like. Now the poor bumper here, unfortunately, it's just got so much cancer that it's really just junk. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and spray it anyways because I'm not replacing it yet this year. of just spraying it over everything is okay if you're me and you're always in dirty clothes and you don't really care if you get it on you but uh, if it's your going to if it's your car you take to work and you work in like a nice setting that isn't just a garage or something probably want to rethink this just like the other side this is pretty good little rot right here I think it might have been bonded once already Blast that in there as best we can. Well, I think this whole girl is ready for winter 2022 here. It might not be the prettiest undercoating job in the world, but I'll tell you, pretty effective. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I am not at all affiliated with these fluid film guys, but I do think they have a pretty effective product here. I'm a fan. I'm sick of listening to that racket. So my little witch's cauldron here, this worked a lot better today doing this like this. Um, the last time when I did my pickup truck, I had the bucket sitting in the truck. Well, first of all, it started in the house right by the furnace register. And then uh, I let it sit in my truck the whole time I was out here getting ready. And then as soon as I was ready to spray, then I shut the truck off, pulled the bucket out and hurried up and just started doing it to it. But by the time I got halfway through the truck, that bucket had pretty well congealed the difference between even like uh see how that's kind of more soupy very pretty runny just falls off the stick but then right here on the bucket the side of the bucket it's like cream cheese almost i mean it's not as hard to manipulate as cream cheese i guess but it's close but it's that soupy in the bucket and then when you dump it into the funnel before it even gets down through the funnel it's already cooled off to the point where it's uh, slower moving so it is kind of a pain to apply in the cold weather like this it's definitely advisable to do it in a nice heated shop which I don't have or uh, do it before it gets this stinking cold but of course I'm always running last minute so this is the way it happens for me but having the heated water there keeping the bucket nice and hot was definitely an improvement over the way I've done it before I'm hoping that by this time next year I'm gonna have a nice heated shop to do this in hopefully anyways guys I guess that's about the end of this video I will uh, touch base with you guys at some point in the future again on how the fluid film has been preserving the beater and my pickup truck uh, it's the second time the beaters gotten the treatment and the first time for the pickup truck so uh, excited to see how much better they come out the other side of winter. I don't really know how much you're going to get out of this video. It was more for entertainment purposes and just to see how uh, somebody like me can get by doing this stuff. It's probably cheaper and easier, honestly, to just send it to somebody and have them apply this stuff. But 
it's like one of those things where if you want it done right, you always do it yourself because you can get it into the nooks and crannies so much better, uh, you know, when it's your vehicle and you actually care versus uh, the guy that you're paying 200 bucks to and he just and you hope for the best. So I probably put way more on the vehicles as well than anybody that you're gonna pay to do it would. So that's why I choose to do it myself. Anyways, the sun is definitely going down and the snow is also coming down at an increasing rate here as we're speaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my junk cleaned up and head back to the house and get me some dinner. If you made it this far, don't forget you can help me out big time by hitting that thumbs up button down below the video. And uh, if you haven't already, be sure you click that subscribe button so I can catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Later.